Welcome back. So the framework is called ASP.NET MVC. And that means, of course, they're using the MVC architecture behind the scenes. And this is not a new thing. Architecture has been on the MVC uh, structure has been around for a long time. But um, it's a great art architecture. And I just want to give you a brief overview of what it actually is. <coughs> it stands for Model View Controller MVC. And the model, it kind of represents the data. So that's where, that's where we store all our information, like the person or the customer or the car or whatever you want. Now the view is actually the user interface and that's where we present the data. That's the goal of that one. And then we have a guy in the middle who kind of handles the requests from the user and manipulates the model data back and forth. So he's the controller, he controls the flow, right? So these are the three names and there's a lot more info on uh, Tutorials Teacher if you want to dive into it. And I think this drawing kind of explains everything. It's like the view sends a request and the controller might manipulate or pull out the data. He sends it back to the view, which then displays the model. It's a great simple way of trying to explain uh, this. And here's another drawing. Uh, the user kind of enters some kind of URL in the browser. That was kind of what I showed you guys before as well. So it pops up asking for a request. Uh, it sends a request to the controller. That's, that's actually the MVC part that we're going to work with. It sends a request. The request says, okay, let's build some HTML page using this MVC framework and let's send a response back to the browser to present it to the user. So that's kind of the request response architecture that we're going to use. Now, that was kind of the MVC part of it. And again, you can go in and really dive into it if you want to. I'm more interested in explaining this guy, the, the folder for you guys. What's actually in all of these different folders that you kind of get, where as soon as you make an MVC application, you get all of this out of the box. And then um, let's just run over some of them right here, the app data folder. It's not something we're going to use that much yet, but it could contain local database files. It could contain um, different files that would never, never be given to a user, right? So it would never be served to the outside of the web server. So that was what we would put in here. The app start folder, we'll play around with that, but it's where we have some config files some configuration files. The, the route config, we'll look at that soon, the route config file. So it's configuration file inside the app start. And we have the content folder. That's where we put all our style sheet, our images. It's, it's stuff that's static, stuff that won't change after the site has been loaded. Uh, we have controllers. These are the C of the MVC, right? So these are the guys that a request will hit the controller and then the, con oh, sorry, a request will hit the controller and the controller will handle some data and return it back to the browser like I just showed you in, in the picture before. We have the fonts. Fonts is, uh, we have default fonts in here. We have scripts. That's where you put in your own JavaScript if you want to. Now we're not going to touch that much on JavaScript, at least in the beginning, but you have jQuery in here already. You have Bootstrap already. Huge JavaScript frameworks ready to use for you. Uh, there's not much to say. They're, they're just there. Modernizer is a framework that can help you work in older browsers, stuff like that. <clears throat> then we have the views. Again, model view controller. This is the view part of that. And the view is uh, actually CS HTML pages. It means C sharp HTML pages. So you learned HTML. Now you're going to learn C sharp HTML. <laughs> and that means that we can start writing C sharp code directly in our HTML code. That's not normal. But we're allowed to do that because we have something called the Racer engine that will convert from CS HTML files into HTML files before they're sent back to the user, right? So before the browser gets them, it will convert them. Let's scroll down. Global ASX, whoops. The global ASX, that's where we have some global calls. So if we want to, every time we start a session, we want to do something, we can add it in there. I don't think we'll touch that that much. This maybe with security later. <clears throat> the package config, I talked about that with the NuGet setup. No, actually, I'm not sure I did. Yeah, I did. I mentioned that in the last video. So that's the package config. And then we have the web config, which is more of a, 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 a application level configuration of the web application you're building, right? We might touch on that as well. So that's kind of the structure. And, and just to show you, let's uh, get back to the code here um, because we have exactly the same structure here. Let me just shut down the application. In your Solution Explorer, you'll see somewhat of the same structure, actually pretty much just the same one. App data is empty, here's the app start. And look, we have a lot more routes because we added security. But here is like, for instance, the route config that we'll look into soon. It's about how we should route our our calls, how we should do the routing in our system. We have the content. You can add your own CSS in the site CSS. So if you have something specific that you made, you could add that inside the site CSS. These two should never be touched. It's bootstraps, um, so they shouldn't be changed, but you can override them in your own. Um, let's get back to that later. Here we have the controllers. We have three available. We have some fonts. We have some models. 
We have some scripts. Again, the scripts are just default. Again, notice the versions are earlier, uh, newer since the Tutorial Teacher is still using a bit older of a version. We have the views and we have a lot more views because we have the account set up as well. And uh, we'll look into that next time. And then we have some extra files down here. Nothing too scary. That's uh, all about the generated code. And uh, let's try and look into the controllers next. See you next time.